Hello, hello, Mordimers here and I'm back from my holidays and I posted two pictures on Twitter and Instagram from my holidays, very nice chess sets with the very nice view. So chess related stuff, if you like beautiful views, uh, check my Twitter, check my Instagram, you can also click follow, I, I will really appreciate that. Now, I came home and I checked the chess world, what's going on. Of course, we have um, the, the movie Queen's Gambit, but also we have a tournament, a serious tournament organized by chess.com platform, uh, Speed Chess Championship. Now, a lot of great names, of course, Hikaru Nakamura, Magnus Carlsen, Anish Giri, Maxim Vasilla Graf, Jan Nepomniashi, Levon Aronian, Fabiano Caruana, Wesley So, Alireza Firuzia, and other um, very, very strong players. There is one uh, thing here which probably catch your attention. Fabiano Caruana doesn't have the pairing. So what's happened here? Uh, actually, to get to that, uh, we have to uh, go to the tournament which was just played and yesterday it's finished speed chess invitational now another 16 great games look at this Vidit Gujarati in the first round played against Daniel Dubov already uh, we had Badur Jobava, we had Jan Krzysztof Duda, Jeffrey Shong, Alexander Grishuk and Peter Svidler and only one winner is going to advance to the to the super final and play against you know all these 16 great players so this is a you know very difficult task but we already knew yesterday that Jan Krzysztof Duda and Sergei Karyakin managed to get to the final. So uh, Sergei Karyakin won against Daniel Narodicki, the, the very famous streamer. Uh, however, uh, we've seen the, the huge difference in classes. Sergei Karyakin, of course, one of the strongest players in the world, um, super grandmaster. Then he played against Badur Jobava, also won very confidently and in the semi-final against Vidit Gujarati. Uh, he also won. And uh, in the other part, we have Jan Krzysztof Duda, who played against the only one non-grandmaster in the first round. So uh, it seems like it was uh, much easier for him than the, than for the other players. Then he beat Jeffrey Shong and then Alexander Grishuk uh, and then he got to the final. Uh, Alexander Grishuk also had to win against Peter Svidler first, but he managed to do that. So that's our final Jan Krzysztof Duda against Sergei Karyakin and I'm going to show you one of the games one of the decisive games because it's very thematic and it's very important to know that uh, tactic and that pattern of the of the tactic because sometimes you know in your games maybe you can use it um, and it's very very typical however it's not completely intuitive to find this so without further ado let's see what happened on the board Jan Krzysztof Duda as white open with knight f3 and we have d5 ready opening on the board we have c4 undermining attacking already the center e6 defending and now e3 now defend the, the pawn on c4, we have knight f6, we have knight c3, we have bishop e7, b3, a castle, bishop b2, a very harmonious development, we have b6, so Sergei Karyakin also want to bring the, the bishop on this diagonal, uh, and now we have the, the main line here, usually what players play is c takes on d5, e takes on d5, and after d4 we have very very typical structure, bishop b7 can be played for example, bishop d3, knight b2, d7, castle, uh, black gonna play something like c5 also um, a6 b5 is possible rook e8 this is also one of the plans and finally knight e4 is also interesting plan as this bishop actually controls uh, e4 so these are possibilities however in our game Jan Krzysztof Duda went for rook g1 bang of course preparing g4 g5 and attack the position of the king uh, it of course can be very very dangerous as especially in the blitz, because this is three minutes game with one second incrementation. We have one game in the database with bishop b7. Uh, in the transposition, we have two games. Um, for example, Peter Fiedler played as white this rook g1 move uh, with g4, g5 attack. 
but here Sergei Karyakin went for c5. So we can say it's kind of novelty here. We have g4 and knight c6 and now g5 as planned. Knight e4 and now exchanging the knights and knight jump to e5 and after exchanging we already have the critical position of the game. So what is going on? First this pawn is under attack and it can be taken but would you take this against the super grandmaster? Maybe if you are a super grandmaster, you could do. Sergei Karyakin is, Jan Krzysztof Duda is as well, but it's pretty much risky because now white gonna have the semi open file, so take it or not. F6 or F5 is recommended by the engine, looks very logical. Let's say F6, G takes on F6, uh, Bishop takes on F6, and let's say Queen H5, the game can continue, something is going on, uh, but it's not so easy actually to attack the position of the king. Of course, the rook can come to help to defend, um, the queen also can come to, to for example, um, to E7, but at the same time, black in the right moment can have some counterplay. Look at these pawns pawns behind uh, next to the king it's um, they can become very easy targets okay so that could happen in the game however we have bishop g5 sergey karyakin says okay show me how you're gonna attack position of my king um, show me i don't see anything here Jan krzysztof duda went for queen g4 and now look at this position can actually white take this bishop it looks like can uh, very easily win the piece, however it's not winning the piece. Uh, actually, in this position, black can play whatever, but don't move this bishop, okay? Queen e7, this move is okay. Bishop b7, it's a, also very interesting moves. Even, you know, g6 is a, is a very good move. Uh, why? Because after taking the, the bishop, the point is, after exchanging everything, black always have this move f6. And as you see, position of black is uh, pretty much good. The rook can, for example, move maybe to b4 and uh, black gonna have this triple pawns, which looks very, very ugly. However, at the same time, it's not so easy to attack these pawns because if the rook tries to attack this pawn, this rook always um, can come to, to f5 to defend uh, and these pawns actually control a lot of squares. Look at this. Uh, all of these squares are controlled by, uh, by, by black pawns and it's not so easy, for example, to bring these pawns to the game. Um, they, of course, can be taken en passant. So a lot of calculations and if they stay on d2 and f2 they can be easy target as i said this uh semi-open files can be very very dangerous so this was the way to go probably white would just you know pick up the pawn and the game could continue like that with double pawns not triple pawns but double pawns but it's still you know black has a pretty much uh, great chances here this rook can come for example to them to the f8 and put a lot of pressure on f2 so that's just one of the ideas this rook probably gonna be passive here um, and so on however sergey karyakin blundered here and he played bishop f6 it looks like pretty logical move however uh, it's not that easy how sergey thought and um, it's time to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white while i enjoy my cup of tea Okay, ready? So, of course, taking the bishop doesn't work because the queen can take and still defend g7. However, it's worth to know the pattern. So look at this. You can actually sacrifice the queen for getting to the windmill. Boom! Queen g7. And this is what Jan Krzysztof Duda played. We had the bishop g7, rook g7, and now the favorite tactic of most of the chess players, uh, the windmill. Uh, infamous windmill, devastating windmill, king h8 is the only move and now rook f7 with this cover check again there is only one move okay the queen also could come to, to f6 but of course is losing uh, king g8, rook g7, king h8 
And here, young Krzysztof Duda could just finish the game with the rook g6. Rook g6 and uh, there is the check, the king cannot move. There is only one way, bring the queen to f6 or the rook. And of course, both of them are losing. White would win with the, with the extra rook. However, young Krzysztof Duda in this position didn't go for rook g6. He played rook a7. I mean, in windmill, when you have all of these pieces, all of these pawns on the second rank, what you want to do is, of course, win them all and enjoy the end game. However, we have only one pawn, rook a7. Probably young Krzysztof Duda calculated something like rook f6 maybe that he want to you know win the win the rook and then win the exchange maybe this way uh, maybe castle and then win the exchange and play with the two rooks against the queen and with two extra pawns of course it's winning for white but in the blitz three minutes against one one second everything can happen so Rook a7 was not really precise move by Jan Krzysztof Duda. Luckily for him, Sergei Karyakin also didn't go for rook g6, but he played king g8. And after rook g7, king h8, now Jan Krzysztof Duda found rook g6 and Sergei Karyakin resigned. And I show you already that he doesn't have much choice. Being rook down, of course, uh, is unplayable. So this is why he resigned. And now I would like to show you uh, what just happened. So here we go. We have already all the scores. Jan Krzysztof Duda against Sergei Karyakin after the blitz section. That was the, that was the equal. Sergei Karyakin also managed to win. Uh, however, in the bullet, that was devastating. Jan Krzysztof Duda won 6-0. So this was like really, really strong finish by Jan Krzysztof Duda. And uh, I would like to just show you that here uh, we're gonna have Jan Krzysztof Duda against Fabiano Caruana. So very exciting speed chess championship on chess.com platform is coming. So stay tuned in a couple of days. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you uh, some of the games some, from that tournament. So that's all for today. And as always, if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you would like to support my channel, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.